welcome to the Kid Men Podcast with Dr. Val and Dr. Virginia, where we talk about everything Kid Men. And pull back the curtain on some of the surprises and challenges in children's ministry that nobody prepares you for. I'm Dr. Val, and together we have over 45 years of experience in children's ministry. I'm Dr. Virginia. Valerie and I met over 10 years ago in our doctoral program at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. We are excited to share with you all the great stuff that we have picked up over the years. We want to minister to you, the children's minister. Welcome, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are super excited. (laughs) We're in the same room. Yay! In my house. I know. I have come down to Virginia's church to be able to speak at a conference that they're hosting. And so I'm going to be doing that conference tonight and tomorrow. But before we did that, we thought it would be fun for us to get together and record an episode actually sitting beside yeah. each other. <laughs> and we've kind of come up with a fun topic yes, I think, for I today. Think so too. <laughs> we're, we've been really excited about it. We decided that what we wanted to do since we're together is that we're going to ask each other questions and answer the <laughs> questions. And the questions we haven't seen oh. before we did this. So so we, we are, are going to be surprising yes, each other with yes. our questions. <laughs> But, um, but some are going to be uh, mm-hmm. Kidman questions, mm-hmm. and some are just going to be personal questions. Yeah. And so we thought that it would be fun uh, to, to have a little Q&A um, for this particular episode. So, Virginia, yeah. do you want to start? Or? Uh, I'll let you start. You're going to let me start? Oh, yeah. Start. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. My first question is, what is your earliest memory of church? Ooh. Probably. So... My grandma would take me, oh, actually, there was one even earlier than that one. I do remember with my parents, I was probably three or four years old, um, and we visited um, the Nazarene Church in our town. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think we had already been going, we must have gone at least a time or two before, because I remember I must have had a birthday, because it was time for me to move up to the next class, Mm -hmm. and I did not want to. And I do remember that once I got in there, they had those... um, like cardboard blocks that have like the brick pattern. (laughs) And so I do, I remember getting in there and getting to like build with those cardboard blocks. And that was a lot of fun. So that kind of redeemed my, my worries about moving up to the, yes, the next class. (laughs) I love those blocks. I actually ordered my last set off Amazon because I was like, I really love to have those in the classroom. They're so much fun. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right. My earliest memory of church, I must have been in preschool, maybe four years old, maybe five. Mm -hmm. But I just remember being in the Sunday, like I have a vivid memory of being in the Sunday school class in the little wooden chairs, sitting at the little wooden table. And I can just remember like the little kitchen set and things being around the room. Mm -hmm. And our teacher was um, telling us a Bible story and she had the flannel board yeah, with flannel all the little out. flannel people yeah. from the story oh, and she was like putting it. I loved it. It was yeah. like, it was so cool because you could see the little images of the people from the story. And I can, I mean, like I can remember sitting there watching as you know, she put the characters up on the flannel board oh. and told the story. So that's my earliest. Oh, that's awesome. First question for you, Val. Okay. Okay. If you couldn't live in Tennessee, where would you live? That's a good question. I love to travel, and so there's so many places that I would love, but I think my dream has always been London. Ooh, like, that's I would, a good answer. I would love to live in London. <laughs> I love it there. I love England, and I love visiting there, so I've always wanted to live there. Uh-huh. But I also have this very strange desire, I think, because I've always lived in really small cities, you know, uh-huh. kind of. In yeah, South, yeah, yeah. That I would think it would be fun to live, like, in New York City or yeah. Seattle. Like, in a, big, in a city. big city where you have, like, an apartment and you walk everywhere. Like, yeah. I don't know, that always sounds like <laughs> that so, Where would you like to I like that answer. My my answer was pretty simple. I was just gonna say North Carolina. Oh yeah, I loved that it had four seasons and like being in the central part of the state. You're not far from the mountains. You're not far from the beach. Um, but yeah. man, your London answer that's fancy. Yeah. I'm gonna go live in a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna live in a pyramid. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like, dream big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but North Carolina is great. Too. It is beautiful. Yeah. Virginia for a while. 
So we were right there, mm-hmm. and it was nice to have the mountains and the beach and yeah. the vineyard. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great <laughs> answer too. So I love that. Yeah. All right, let me see. What is your favorite activity to do with kids in Bible study? Like, what is your Ooh. favorite thing to do with children in? In a, in a Bible study setting. That's easy because I tend to do it a lot is hand motions. Yeah. It's one, it's my go-to. I love to do hand motions mm-hmm. either, you know, we're going to read this Bible passage. Whenever you hear this word, you do that. Yeah. We're going to repeat a phrase and do hand motions. We're going to practice, you know, right now we're practicing learning the books of the Bible with hand motions. Mm-hmm. So hand motions are my go-to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. They're so much fun. And the kids love them. That's uh, when they have such a good time. Uh-huh. Them. See, that's good. That's good. I love to do games with balls. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a big, like, and I think the reason why I love to do that is because it is something really easy you can do with any story. But I just love to have a kush ball or a big mm-hmm. rubber ball and just have the kids stand around the room and toss a ball and have them repeat it the books of the Bible or to repeat the Bible yeah. verse or to talk about the story or to do whatever. Cause I think the kids have fun with it. And then mm-hmm. it's just a great way to get them active, but also reviewing the Bible story. Question two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what were some early signs that you would end up in children's ministry? Oh gosh. I think I remember um, going to my grandmother's church, which mm-hmm. was one of those really small. Mm-hmm. Now, my grandmother passed away when I was 12. So this had to be, I don't remember how old I was, but I was younger than 12. Yeah. And I would work with the preschoolers during yeah. service yeah. pretty much by myself. Oh. <laughs> different day and time. It was very different day and time. Um, so, but I can remember, you know, being in like trying to, you know, like do activities and do things with them yeah. at that very small church. And so I think that that was probably <laughs> the first sign, but I always, I love to play teacher. I, I was raised an only child. So I would set up classrooms in my room with my stuffed animals and my toys and I would teach whatever <laughs> I was you know, studying at school. So teaching's just always been it for me. Yeah, that's awesome. What about you? That's awesome. I would say um, whenever I was 14 years old, I was um, encouraged to go serve at our associational girls camp for girls in third through sixth grade. Your camp will get you. And so, yeah, so I was a junior counselor and just loved it, fell in love with it. And then it would go back summer after summer and then, Once I, as a senior in high school, once I turned 18, I started serving in the preschool ministry. And then in college, I started serving in Awana. And so, so really it was, it was girls camp (laughs) that that hooked me in. Um, And that I loved. Yeah, it does. It does. It reels you in. You've never been. You need to go to camp. (laughs) What is your favorite TV show to binge? Oh, okay. Or just your favorite TV show yeah, right now. Do you yeah, have a favorite yeah. TV show right now? We don't have time to watch a lot of TV. It's yeah. not like a sophisticated like commitment we've made. We just like don't have time. Right, right, um, right. But probably, and and we don't have it. We don't have a streaming service that has this anymore. Mm-hmm. But historically, it's always been the office. Yeah. We are office people. <laughs> So, um, so the office was one of our favorite things to binge and to watch and to re- rewatch. So it's definitely been like a comfort show for my husband and I. Right. Right. <laughs> so sure. yeah. I am obsessed right now with the new show on CBS. It's called Tracker. Okay, and so yeah. it's, it's like my favorite new show. And I've also been watching something from a Canadian TV show mm-hmm. that somebody recommended to me called Murdoch Mysteries. Oh, I, wa- I started watch watching that, really? like, but then I kind of, they lost me in the middle. Oh, no. I did start watching that a few years ago. I just started watching <laughs> them and I am like obsessed with it. And so I've been watching it a lot. My comfort show changes over the years. It's been, you know, like Friends or it's been, you know, like, and right now I've been watching Big Bang Theory a lot going Mm -hmm. back to the, but I'm so obsessed with Murdoch Mysteries right now (laughs) that that's really what I'm watching anytime I have a chance to watch TV. Next question. I think I may know the answer, but if you surprise me, it's okay. What is your personal favorite theme park ride for your own enjoyment? Not with the grandkids, not with your husband, for your own enjoyment. My, we're we're Disney fans. You guys, I'm sure we've talked about it before. Uh, I became obsessed with the Haunted Mansion. Good! (laughs) 
on our very first trip, uh, I had a cast member, for some reason, a cast member and I was talking before we went in for the very first time. Of course, I had gone when I was younger, but I didn't remember much about it. And so she told me a lot of like hidden things to yeah, look for. Yeah, yeah. And then after that first trip, I started reading about it. Yeah. I got really obsessed with the Imagineers that created yeah. it. And so, yeah, Haunted Mansion is my favorite <laughs> attraction. So. Yeah, mine too. I was just going to see. I was like, I think she'll say Haunted Mansion, but I could be surprised. I could be surprised. I have a lot of uh, white ones that I really love, but it's, yeah, yeah, Haunted you Mansion. Could, you could like, secretly love the Hall of Presidents <laughs> or whatever. I do like going into the Hall of Presidents. I do enjoy that one, but not, yeah, no, that, that's my number one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and that's mine too. And whenever I first had my husband ride with me on it, because he had, he had been to, I think, Hollywood Studios once before in college, but he'd never been to the other parks. And so mm -hmm. whenever he went for the first time and we went together and we rode Haunted Mansion, he was like, that's your favorite ride? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, because it's not really scary. Yeah. It's just, I don't okay. know, it's just like fun. And like you said, there's like interesting history behind, oh, you know, the is. design of it and all this stuff. Yeah. And so, well, you just yeah. have this nostalgia that comes with it. <laughs> yes. like, for example, uh, like I always talked about um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yeah. Always yeah. talked about it. Always because it was gone by the time Liz and I started going. Yeah. And so I always talked about how awesome it was, how much I remembered it. You know, I remembered it so fondly. And so when we went to Disneyland a few years ago, we wrote it and literally at the end, he was going, this you've been yeah. talking about this for all of these years and i was like yeah because it's just you know it's yeah. mr toad it's yeah. just yeah nostalgic yeah, yeah yes. it really is yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome if you weren't working in children's ministry or education what would you do for a living what would your job be oh gosh i don't i don't know i don't know I was on a trajectory trajectory to go to law school prior to feeling called into ministry. So I don't know, maybe I'll be a lawyer, but also I really love watching those videos of people like decorating cakes <laughs> and like, and like making the clay earrings. Uh -huh. So I don't know, maybe I would have gone to law school and then Art like, <laughs> yeah, and then just gotten over all that and then be like, Forget it. I'm just going to be a cake decorator for the rest of my life. I don't yeah. know. I <laughs> so, yeah, I know. See, education is all everyone. And mm -hmm. I did the same thing. I was pre law first and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But I think now I've always said I love organizing things. Like, oh. I think I would want to have an organizing business yeah. and be an organizer, is what yeah. I've said. I also always kind of wish I, my dad had always wanted to be an architect, and I do love to draw and to plan and to do. So mm -hmm. I always thought being an architect would be really fun, but yeah, that was fun. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be really specific on this question. Okay. What is your favorite children's ministry craft supply or item? So, so you're going to your supply room. What's that thing that you're like, man, this is, this is my favorite or this is the most useful supply or craft item okay i love to paint mm -hmm, with kids mm -hmm, and preschoolers mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm, a little weird mm -hmm. i know um and so but but the uh, so paint is like <laughs> something i always made sure uh -huh. i had the paper and the paint and all that uh -huh. but i have to say that ever since i was a little kid i have been obsessed with crayons okay yeah like yeah, a yeah. brand new box Oh, of crayons yeah, yeah, yeah. is like my favorite thing from when <laughs> I was a kid. I love the way crayons smell. Uh -huh. I love that new box, the sharp uh -huh. points. Uh -huh. So the crayons was the first thing I thought of when you asked me that nice. question. But I yeah. think doing a craft with kids, I love to paint with kids. Okay. So I enjoy finding things to stamp with and to paint yeah, with. And yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What about no, you? No tracks. I was thinking um, popsicle sticks. Because you can do so many different things. You can mm -hmm. glue them together. You can write on them. You can do so many different things. I mean, you have to yes. obviously do, you know, have markers or whatever other stuff with them. Yes. But popsicle sticks, they're so versatile. That so, would be a close second yeah, for me. Yeah. I do love, I love to come up with a good name with popsicle sticks. So, yes. Awesome. Where is your happy place? Mm. If you have a happy place, where is your happy place? 
I would just say I love being outdoors. Really, really m most places outdoors. Well, I, let me say that. I like being outside in the middle of trees. Yeah. Even though I am in the Florida panhandle, I'm not a beach girl. I don't like being sandy. I yeah. don't like sand everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love just being in the trees. So we've got some nice little like nature trails and walking paths. And so... And I love the mountains. I love, love, love going to the mountains. So being in the trees and being in nature, mm -hmm. that's probably, that's right. yeah, my happy place. Mm -hmm. happy place. <laughs> uh, it's not surprising that ours is <laughs> Disney. Yeah, I know where yours is going to be. <laughs> uh, and I know that, that sounds really weird. <laughs> but for us, when Lewis and I first started going, the reason why we fell in love with it was because we we both were very, I mean, I was in ministry. So I, and, and we had, you know, for me, we had the Christian school at the church in the church. Mm -hmm. So I was constantly working. I mean, it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, constantly. Mm -hmm. Lewis um, is a database architect. He works with computers. And so he works constantly. He's always writing. He's always working. And Disney was the first place we had ever gone where we could like disconnect and yeah. really not check on work all day long. Mm -hmm. If we just went to the beach or to the mountains, yeah. we would pull our computers out the and end up sitting there working. Yeah. And so Disney really, you know, we were, we would go with our daughter and we could really disconnect and just have family mm -hmm. time. And so that just became my place to yeah. go to disconnect. And it's where I would go to make big decisions because I could just like have fun and think and not yeah. have to be distracted by a lot of, things yeah, going on around me yeah. yeah so yeah <laughs> so that's cool. all right so this is slightly different than my last question okay what is your favorite children's ministry resource other than the bible I think you guys know, you've heard me talk about it too many times. I love the levels of biblical <laughs> learning from LifeWay. I love the way it helps me think through planning curriculum for the church and for our ministry. And so I really, really enjoy that. Um, there's also a children's Bible encyclopedia that I mm -hmm. obsessively used when I was actively serving in children's ministry. Um, and I really loved it too, because it had pictures and it was easy for the kids to read and understand. Mm -hmm. And so that was a resource that I went back to a lot when I was big in a classroom. So I think mm -hmm. it would be those two things. Uh -huh. I like that answer. Yeah. I was thinking I'm going to take the, um, loophole answer and say the internet. <laughs> but if I had to be more specific, I would even say Pinterest. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, because that's good. Anytime you're like, oh, I need an activity yeah. for this random Bible story, you go to Pinterest, Pinterest has it. You're it's like, like oh, videos. our VBS yeah. theme is like, I don't know how to decorate for it this year. Go to Pinterest. Pinterest knows. Pinterest mm -hmm. knows. So yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> so, a really yeah. good answer. That's a good, that's a good uh, resource. That so. This one's a hard one. Ooh, okay. What kid men mistake? makes you cringe the most when you hear someone is doing it oh gosh oh gosh oh goodness so what is okay. like your pet peeve cringy kid men okay oh i was gonna say this is gonna sound awful can i give different categories <laughs> you can um, i mean we have no rules here we're good okay <laughs> probably Whenever it's something unsurprisingly related to safety and security, whenever I hear that the church doesn't do background checks because people didn't want to do it or, you know, they don't have two adults in the room, they only have one or, um, you know, they don't do a check in any sort of check in system, analog, computer, whatever. Um, Things like that. I, I cringe. I cringe at those things for one, you know, yeah, for right. different reasons. Yeah. Um, then maybe I cringe at other things. I'm just like, oh, no, 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 you have to do this. You have to do this. Yes. Um, these things are so important. Um, so so that's maybe one set of things. Maybe the another thing. So that two things that came to mind. And then the other thing that came to mind was, oh, and please hear my heart on this. Like Christian phrases, Christian jargon like asking Jesus into your heart yes, and other sort of Christian jargon that mm -hmm. we use and we understand, mm -hmm. but a child or an adult mm -hmm. who doesn't have a church background right. isn't, 
going to understand. Um, you know, or a small child, it may confuse them. And so, you know, being aware of our Christian jargon, our Christianese, yeah. and being intentional in our word choices and how we explain things and how we talk about things. Yeah. So, That's a good one. yeah. That's a good yeah. One. <laughs> I think oh, along with safety and security for me is how a church handles salvation and baptism with mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, in any time it's very heavy handed mm-hmm. or tied in with treats or parties or, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, that really just hurts my heart because, you know, it's such a, a, an important topic of discussion and we want our kids to really, really understand it. Right. And so that's what worries me. So sometimes I have that cringe moment of like, oh, I hope that you've really spent time with her right. to help right. her understand what it means to be saved and what it means yeah. to be baptized. And so, yeah, so I think that's mine. Yeah. So what is a food that you have tried but you would never eat again because it was bad or gross. <laughs> That's a really hard question because I tried some really weird things. <laughs> um, because I do not enjoy insects at all, yeah, like yeah. the yeah. chocolate covered okay. grasshoppers, yes, the chocolate yes, covered ants. Yes, yes. I did not find that interesting whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh-huh. I did. I. I I had gator one time. That is not my favorite. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm not a really big. I come. I come from Tennessee. My dad loved to hunt. I've done the frog legs and the deer and mm-hmm. rabbit, and I just don't love mm-hmm. wild game. Like yeah. I could just pass on any of that. Any of that. It's, yeah, it's yeah. probably my like. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm good to not ever <laughs> be that adventurous ever again. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, in general, my husband and I are kind of adventure eaters. We do mm-hmm. like to try new foods. We do like to try new cuisine. Um, but goat was like a one and done for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, love them. yeah. So that that was yeah. definitely my one and done. <laughs> you know, when you're on mission trips, when yes. you're in other countries, it's yes. very important that when they do give you food. Yes that you are kind and gracious and that you eat. But sometimes in my life, it's been very hard because I always said I've I've wanted to do, I'd Uh love to do amazing race. Like I think amazing (laughs) race would be really fun, Uh but I would never even like apply to it Uh because I could never eat like the things (laughs) that they have to eat when they have to Uh eat. I can't yeah. do it anymore. I think I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm just like, I'm past that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, do you have a hobby that's outside of education and ministry? And if you do, how did it start? So I, I, I decided recently mm-hmm. that I needed to have something to do with my hands that could be a mindless activity, mm-hmm. except I haven't learned it well enough for it to be a mindless activity because I'm still really struggling and it's crochet. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to teach myself because you see all these adorable little like stuffed mm-hmm. animals and things that people crochet. And thus far I have crocheted like a long, like lumpy line <laughs> and it's not it's nice good. and I'm definitely doing something wrong but I can't figure out what <laughs> so I'm sort of trying to learn how to crochet but it's Yay. not going well oh, so I am a child of the 80s and so I love video games oh uh, yeah and so I will play any video game at any point and so that's always just been a big hobby for me mm-hmm. I enjoy I enjoy um, adventure games like Zelda, The Legend mm-hmm. of Zelda, that kind of thing. I love those, but I will also just play any kind of mindless, you know, Mario Kart, any, mm-hmm. any kind of mindless video game. And so I have attempted to take up watching soccer this year and have become slightly oh, obsessed gosh. with soccer. And so that has become <laughs> like a new learning experience. Okay. So like I said, I've been doing video, playing video games yeah. since I was a little kid. Um, so I wanted to try to learn something new that I didn't know anything about, and I knew nothing about soccer, and so I have become slightly obsessed. That's so – well, good. It's so funny. Yeah. It's like we're both like, hey, we're going to take up new hobbies yeah. this year. Yeah, do something And different. yours is soccer, mm-hmm. and my initial reaction is, okay, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> and then mine is crochet, which is not going well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, for me. Yeah. got it. Uh, <laughs> are there any – historical conspiracy theories that you're like, you know, 
maybe that maybe that holds weight. Maybe there's maybe there's something to that. So, so do you have any conspiracy theories of, you know, how the pyramids were built or whatever? Yeah, see, <laughs> I, I kind of have a lot of them. <laughs> Perfect. Um, because oh. I was a history minor in mm-hmm. uh, my undergrad, mm-hmm. and so I've mm-hmm. always been very obsessed with mm-hmm. mysteries. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, so Stonehenge is really high on my list okay. of, like, okay. I, I've always said I have... I have a list of questions for God someday when I get to heaven. <laughs> and I have this feeling he's just going to tell me none of that really matters anymore. Yeah. And I'm still never going to get an answer to But Stonehenge is, is really okay. high because I feel like there's something with that. Like there was some sort of, yeah. you know, like, okay. because I also like, I love the movie like National Treasure. So the okay. whole idea of like the there's Masons, a map and, and there's it, yeah, yeah. The, the founding fathers had like this mm-hmm, whole like mm-hmm. I, I I feel very strongly that we're gonna find out there's something there. Okay. I desperately want to know where Amelia Earhart is. Oh yeah, I oh, wanna, I heard a really sad one about her. They've got a few sad ones, yeah. and they think they found the plane this time. But they <gasps> they've said that a hundred oh. times, so it's gonna be a while before we find out if it is. But yeah. so I keep that one pretty close in JFK. I keep. Club. Like oh, I read about that, okay. so that's another question I have. Okay. So yeah, okay. so I have a few little like I feel like the government knows more about things than they're telling us. <laughs> they're telling us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I mean, occasionally things just sort of like drift across, you know, my mm-hmm. awareness. Um, but I don't. I don't know. I'm not like super into any, you know, conspiracy theory necessarily. Um, I read an interesting one fairly recently about like the Titanic, um, you know, and about like the white star line and I don't know, them like being shady and yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if any of it's true or whatever. So they have all, I mean, there's a billion of them yeah. you know, out there. And I don't know. So birds aren't real. It's for me, it's the whole mystery. Yeah. Part, you know, that's the part, like, I want to know what happened, what caused that, like why, <laughs> you know, the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle. I remember yeah. reading a lot about that when I was a kid because yeah. I was like, what's the deal? There has to be something there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't know more than coincidences. And so it was like, you know, it's like those kinds of things that I, get really curious about and I'm like, yeah. I'm like I want to know and that was why I said you know I'm, I'm just afraid he's going to say you don't have to worry about any of that anymore I'm like no I've got to know who Please made Stonehenge yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I love that question that's good all right um what is your most stressful kidman responsibility and how do you navigate that Ooh, that's a good question. And that's a big one. Um, I would say for me and probably for a lot of people, it is recruiting volunteers, um, whether it is our once a month worship hour volunteers, our weekly Sunday school teachers for a big event like Vacation Bible School. Um, and so one is to always be recruiting, always be kind of having recruiting conversations with people as they you know, join the church, get involved, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Another would be enlisting the help of others. Um, So like creating team leads for BBS um, or directors or key leaders um, who can help recruit other people. And so I think there's a lot of different ways. I think um, being proactive and working on it before you think you really need to work on it yeah. <laughs> are, are two of the yeah. uh, two of the probably best things you can do is enlist help and then start early for whatever it is that you're recruiting for. Yeah, I think just knowing that everybody struggles with it and it doesn't yeah. it doesn't reflect on how well you were doing your job mm. if you were struggling with recruitment because that's just something that we all struggle with, mm-hmm. and so that's just mm-hmm. something that yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I have to agree. I think that over the years has probably been one of the biggest concerns for me. I think, like you said, I think always having a plan B, having yeah. that extra emergency plan that you mm-hmm. have in your pocket, mm-hmm. knowing that there are going to be days when you're shorthanded mm-hmm. and that things are going to get hectic and that you might have to pick up and, and fill in, but to have those mm-hmm. kinds of things in place. But I think that that really is one of the most stressful things about mm-hmm. our work. Is, yes. Yeah. Is yep. the number of people. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last question. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite Kidman topic 
to learn more about? Like when you when yeah. you are reading or when you're going to conferences or when you're doing what is just not the one you need the most, yeah. but your favorite, favorite topic. One. Yeah, definitely things with like child development and neuroscience in particular. I had a guess that um, was what you'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I love um, love learning more about child development. I love learning more about how kids' brains grow and develop and learn and change. And so, yeah, so that, that one's my favorite for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's what mine, mine tends to lean towards um, biblical literacy mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and curriculum and material and that kind of thing, reading more about that because yeah. I love, I love that idea that, that developing the scope and sequence, that mm -hmm. figuring out how <laughs> to be more effective in the classroom, those tend to be the yeah. things that I tend to lean to a lot too so those are my favorite classes to go to my favorite conference <laughs> topics to hit so. well this has been really fun one it's been fun yeah! being together because we so rarely get to be together <laughs> and so it's been fun to be able to do that I'm looking forward to the conference this weekend I'm yeah. looking forward to hanging out with Virginia and talking a little bit more about what we would like to do to be able to meet your needs better in yes. the work that we're doing here through the podcast and so we just feel so privileged mm -hmm. to be able to serve you and we are just humbled by your comments and your words of encouragement and just the fact that you take time to listen with us and download our, our episodes it, it means so very much to us and so on that note as always <laughs> we want to hear from you we want comments we want um, emails we want to know what we can talk to you about that's going to be the most beneficial for you and the most helpful for you and we would just ask that you would pray for us over the next few weeks. Um, you know, I am headed to Mayo Clinic um, to do some things for my health over the next few weeks. But we've just had a lot going on the last couple of months. And so we really have so many things we're excited to do for you guys that we want to get going on. And we're hoping that we're going to be able to do that soon and get things going. But for now, we just thank you for taking time to spend with us. We hope you've had as much fun listening as we had recording this episode. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.